Hi everyone, it's Maylee here from Maylee Designs and today I'm going to show you how to create the colorwork grid for the tapestry tee pattern. A lot of you may already know, I created this pattern specifically for custom colorwork creation. With that being said, this also means that with the endless possibilities that this pattern has, you will be creating your own colorwork grid for this pattern as well. If you plan on making one of my prototypes or one of my testers' prototypes, check out the tester lookbook and under the prototype information, you will find the link to the colorwork grid that was used for that version. If you decide to use one of the testers' prototypes, make sure to tag them if you decide to post it on social media. I'm sure they would love to see it. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do three things. First, I'm going to show you how to create your graph from a photo. After that, I'm going to go back to the beginning and show you how to create a freeform graph. If you plan on creating a repeating graph, you're also going to follow the same instructions as the freeform graph. After we create the freeform graph, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about how to copy and paste your repeats so that you have a seamless looking image. And then after all of that, I'm going to show you how to block off any non-existing stitches. This part will apply to everyone regardless of what graph you are creating. So even if you're not following my exact steps in this tutorial and are creating your own colorwork grid, you are definitely going to want to follow these instructions to block off non-existing stitches. This is important because for the rest of the pattern, you are essentially going to be following the colorwork grid and your grid is going to become your reference for exact stitch counts later on in the pattern. Now that we are finally ready to start, go ahead and navigate to stitchfiddle.com. Log in if you already have an account, otherwise create one. You will want to make sure that you create an account so you can save your grids because you will likely have to go back and reference them multiple times throughout this pattern. We will start by creating a grid from photo. In the upper left hand corner, click the hamburger menu and then click create new chart. Next we will start by choosing some options. For our craft, we're going to choose crochet. We will then choose crochet with colors, no preference for the yarn, and then from picture. At this point, a screen should appear with a little camera right in the center. If you click on the camera, it will open your file explorer and you can locate the image that you want to upload into Stitch Fiddle. As you can see here, I already have the image uploaded into Stitch Fiddle. If your image is successfully loaded, you'll see it pixelated on the right hand side and then on the left hand side, options will appear. Next, navigate to the how to create your grid section of the pattern and locate step three. Step three has a list of options that were selected in the previous screen, but now we want to pay attention to the bottom of this step where it has your gauge and grid size information. Just as a friendly reminder, my patterns automatically calculate how many stitches in rows to make based on your personal body measurements and gauge. So do not follow what I am doing exactly and make sure to use the column and row numbers as stated in your pattern. My pattern is telling me that for my front and back sections, they need to be 80 stitches wide and 36 rows high. In Stitch Fiddle, I'm going to navigate to the size parameter and click on the exact size text box. Then I'm going to type 80 for the width and 36 for the height. At this point, you might notice that your picture is getting cut off. You can leave it like this if you wish. Otherwise, you may need to modify the size of your image using an image editor. You can do this by adding some extra blank space above, below, to the left or to the right. Just make sure that your final picture is scaled to the same size as your grid in order to achieve the full picture. Next, navigate to the gauge parameters and click on the drop down. Select custom and type in the gauge values as stated in your pattern. As you can see in my pattern, my columns is 18 and my rows is 16. Navigate to the yarn color section of your parameters and select how many colors you plan on making your graph. My picture is only two colors, so I am going to choose two. I'm now going to click save chart and then my chart will appear. You will likely notice some imperfections with the image. I highly recommend taking the time to modify your grid so it has a crisp, clean look. You can do so by clicking the little pencil icon at the top and then the color that you want to modify. You can then click on anywhere you want in the grid to change its color. I'm going to speed through this process just a little bit so you can see the changes that I made and how much of a difference it makes. Once you have finished tweaking the colors of your grid, you are ready to move on to the next section which is blocking off non-existent stitches. 
The next portion that I'm going to go over is how to create a free form graph. But if you are creating a repeating graph, you would follow these exact same steps. In the upper left hand corner, click on the hamburger icon and then select create new chart. Just like in the previous example, choose crochet, crochet with colors, no preference for the yarn, and then an empty chart. The grid size prompt will appear and just as it's stated in my pattern, I'm going to type 80 for my columns and 36 for my rows since I want to modify my front slash back sections. Next, I'm going to go back up to the gauge since it's automatically selected for me and I want to modify it to be the value that is stated in my pattern. Once I have finished modifying the gauge, I am then ready to create my chart. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click the create chart button. Then my chart will appear. Something that I forgot to do before moving forward with this tutorial is changing the row numbers. You can update these settings by going to file, chart settings, and then direction. Just as a personal preference, I like to have my charts being viewed from top to bottom and then working from left to right since that's how I read. However, some people prefer to have their charts being made from bottom to top. Either way, whatever works best for you is fine as long as you're still able to follow the instructions as provided in the pattern. To zoom in and out, you can use the magnifying glass in the upper left hand corner. If you are making a freeform graph, you can skip ahead and block off the non-existent stitches. Next, I will be explaining how to create a repeating graph. If you are making a repeating graph from an image that you found on Pinterest, I recommend recreating it off to the side of your chart in the left or right hand corner, as long as it's away from the middle. If you are using one of my versions or one of my testers versions of a repeating graph, the Stitch Fiddle link should either be in the tester lookbook or in the listing if they are selling it. Navigate to the Stitch Fiddle link and then copy the repeating graph. You can do so by clicking the little square icon in the toolbar above and then selecting the area you want to copy and then right clicking it and clicking the copy button. Something that I want to add is that if you're using a larger repeating graph, such as the leaf vines version of my T, then you only want to copy the area that you need. The center of your graph is where two repeating grids should meet. The leaf vines version of my graph is about 81 or 82 stitches. And let's pretend that the graph that I'm trying to make is 100 stitches. That means I would only need to copy 50 stitches. Since the chart I'm using in my example is smaller, only 27 stitches, when I need 40 stitches, I'm going to copy the entire thing. As I mentioned in the previous example, the middle of my graph is where two repeating grids should meet. That means when I paste my repeating grid into my pattern, I want it to be just to the left or right of center. Since I have 80 total stitches in my grid, that means stitches 40 and 41 are going to mark the center of my graph. I'm going to place a little line here using the line button in the toolbar and changing the color to something that is going to be visible to me just so I can know where the center of my graph is. The way that the paste function works in Stitch Fiddle is that wherever your mouse is located, it's going to paste the image as if your mouse is located in the upper left hand corner of the image. With that being said, I'm going to locate the topmost square to the right of center, and then I'm going to right click and then click paste. As you can see, one full repeat was pasted to the right of center and we have about 14 stitches left. To fill in the leftover 14 stitches, we are going to go back to the original graph and copy the leftmost 14 stitches of the original repeat. Then we will go back to our graph and then right click in the square in the upper left corner of the 14 stitches and paste. We have now filled in the right side of the graph with our repeats. Next, scroll to the bottom and then do the same thing except with the top of the graph instead. I'm going to speed through this portion of the video so you can see it. You are going to do the same thing with the left side of the graph, but just remember that when you paste your repeating grid, it's going to paste as if your mouse is at the location of the upper left side of the repeat. So for example, since my repeat is 27 stitches, that means I'm going to have to place my mouse 27 stitches to the left of center before I right click and paste. Again, I'm going to speed through this portion of the video. 
Also, if you make a mistake, you can click Control Z on your keyboard and it will undo your change, or you can click the backwards arrow button at the top of the toolbar. Next, we are going to block off the non-existent stitches from the yoke. Make sure you're following along using the rows and stitches stated in the pattern and not in my example. As you can see in my pattern, it says columns 40 and 41 will mark the center of the chest piece. Since my first row will start with 18 stitches, my first row will start with column number 32 and end with column 49. I'm going to use the line tool to place a little line just on the outside of both of those stitches so I can use them to reference for the next step. The second part of this step then says to block off all of the other stitches for this row. I'm going to choose a gray color since I don't plan on using gray for my grid and I'm just going to fill in all of the other stitches for this row using the gray color. The next step in the pattern says that we will be working increases every one row for a total of 24 rows. For every row that we are supposed to increase on, block off one less square on each side and repeat this for all of the specified rows. I'm going to speed up this portion of the video, but next you will see me performing this step. Then once you have finished, the next step would be to repeat this step on the other side of your grid. When repeating these steps for the arm sections, you might notice that your pattern says to increase every two rows or three rows instead. So in this example here, I'm showing you what it looks like to increase every two rows. That means that you'll work two normal rows and then on the next row, you will increase. Once we have finished blocking off our non-existent stitches, this is roughly what our final grid will look like. The stitches where there are no increases on the left and right side of the grid in this example is due to the amount of ease that is being added to the garment. If you are making a fitted shirt and are not planning on adding any ease, you might not have these extra stitches. There's also a possibility that your grid will end up looking like this. As you can see, the steps in the pattern for this particular example are a little bit more detailed. It says that you will be working increases every two rows for a total of 18 rows, and then once you reach row 19, you will not be working any more increases. From rows 19 to 23, block off the same number of stitches as you did for row 18. So in the grid, you can see that rows 1 through 18 I did in a light gray, and then 19 through 23 I did in a dark gray. As I mentioned before, I like to read my charts from top to bottom, left to right. If you created your grid in a different direction or want to read it in a different way, you can modify that by going into the settings like we did previously. Now that I have finished the front slash back section, I'm going to repeat all of these steps for my arm sections as well. Once I finish creating the arm sections of the graph, I'm finally ready to start crocheting. Next, I'm going to enable something called the progress tracker, which will help us keep our place while we are crocheting. You can enable this by clicking on the file button and then progress tracker.